All right, so what is up, guys? In this video, I want to cover what the navigation component in Android Studio is and how we can use it to simplify our lives when we create fragments and want to switch between them. Plus, I will show you also how to send data between fragments using this navigation component. So as you can see here, I've already created a sample app and we will be creating this also in the tutorial. So the first thing we want to do is enter our name, which will be Federico. And right below, we will add our age, which will be 99. And if we click on accept, you will see that we will be transferred to a second activity with a back button. And it will also have all the relevant info that we wanted to insert. And if we go back to our first fragment, our info will still be there. And if we click accept again, it will take us to the second fragment. So it's a very simple application and it should definitely help demonstrate how you can use the navigation component in Android Studio. So let's forget about this and get started immediately by creating a new project. And inside this project, we will go straight to our Gradle scripts file and tap on build.gradle. And inside here this time, we actually have to add quite a bit. So the first thing we have to add are the two navigation components. And it will also have this navigation version, which is 2.3.0. And I will leave all of this in the description as always. And also for this project, it is necessary that we add compile options. So right under build types, we are gonna go ahead and paste in this compile options, which targets Java version 1.8. And the same thing goes for the Kotlin options. And with that being done, we have to go straight up to where it says apply plugins. And in this case, we are going to add this Android X .navigation .safe args Kotlin plugin, if you are using Kotlin, of course, otherwise they also have a Java one. And finally, once we've added that, we can go to our build.gradle, the one that says projects, and inside our dependencies section, we will go right below that and add one more, and it will give us the definition number and a class path. And we need this for the app to work, so definitely remember to include this. But once we've included the dependencies and the plugin, we can go ahead and click on sync now. And it has successfully synced, which means we can now close our Gradle scripts and open our REST folder. And inside our REST folder, we are going to create a new Android resource file. And we are going to call this test underscore nav. And then we have to type in the resource type, which is going to be a navigation type. And we will click on OK. So the first thing to note in here is that we have an empty graph, essentially. And to populate it with some items, we, all we have to do is go and click on this plus symbol over here and create a new destination, which will help us create a new fragment. And the first thing we are going to do is create our first fragment, which we shall call first fragments, and we will tap on finish. And that will take care of the first fragment. And as you can tell by this house symbol over here, this will be classified as the home fragment. Then let's go ahead and click on the plus symbol one more time and create one more new destination. And this will be our second fragment. So we'll just replace blank with second fragment and we will click on finish. And as you can see, now we have two fragments in here and you can move them around freely. And if you want to change which one is the home fragment, all you have to do is click on it and tap on the home symbol over here and it will change the second fragment to the home fragment, but we don't really want that. So let's just go back and assign the first fragment as the home fragment. The second thing to do is to create a connection between these fragments. So we want our first fragment to go to our second fragment when we click on any button and we want our second fragment to take us back to our home fragment when we click on the back button and we specify that we want it to go there. So we've essentially created two links that take us between the fragments and that will take care of what we have to do in here for now. We will come back later because I still have quite a bit to show you, of course, but now it's time to go to our activity main XML. And once we are here, we just want to get rid of our text view and we want to search for something called a nav host fragment. And then you could just drag that and drop it in here and you'll see that our test nav will be included and we'll click on OK. And you will see already that it has included the view from our first fragment inside there. It says, hello, blank fragment. And yes, I have noted that I have mistyped test. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that immediately. We'll type in test nav and we will click on refractor. So now I have fixed that. And one more thing to do is to change this to a relative layout. I will type in center and parent as always. I want this to match the parent and match the parent. And we can just remove these tools at the bottom. And that will take care of actually displaying the fragments in our main activity. The next thing we have to do is go to our fragment layouts and edit those accordingly. As you saw earlier, I had an edit text for the name and an edit text for the age. And I had a button that allowed us to change the fragments. I just called it an accept button. So all you have to note in here are the ID names so you don't get confused. For the first edit text, the one that takes the name, I call it et underscore enter name. 
Then for the edit text, I text the H, I called it et underscore enter H. And finally for the button, I named it button underscore accept. So you just need to remember those IDs or create your own. Then we can go to our uh, second fragment, XML. And inside here, I'm going to copy and paste in two text views. So as you can see, the first text view has an ID of TV underscore name, and the second text view has an ID of TV underscore age. And the data from our first fragment will be passed into the second fragment, and it will be displayed into these two text views. But next, we can actually go to our Java folder open it up and you'll see that we have the two fragments in here. And we actually have to clean it up because it has created a lot of code for us that we will not be using. So first we can get rid of this section up here above the class, then inside here all the way on until on create view, we want to get rid of that. And everything below on create view, we will get rid of as well. So all you should have left in here is our on create view. And we are going to do the exact same thing for our second fragment. So I think an easy way to do this would be to just copy and paste this, delete absolutely everything, paste it in, rename it to second fragment, and definitely don't forget to change the layout down here to second fragment or fragment second as it prefers. And there's also another thing I want to do before we continue with the fragments and that is go to our main activity and actually set up the action bar with the nav controller. So we'll type in set up action bar with nav controller and we need to find the navigation controller. So we'll type in that, and that's going to be our r.id, and it's going to be called fragment. But of course, I want to rename this, so let's go back to our activity main. And as you can see, our main fragment, the holder of the two other fragments, is just named fragment. But let's go ahead and refractor this so we can tell what it is later. And we're going to give it the name of main underscore fragment. So this is just the holder. And we can go back to our main activity. And as you can see inside there, it has refracted it for us. So we have our main fragment in there and this will be the nav controller. And then we also need to add the up button. So let's go on support navigate up. And inside here, we'll create a value of nav controller. And that's going to equal find nav controller, which is going to take the same nav controller from earlier. And then down here, we can return nav controller dot navigate up, or we can also return super dot on support navigate up. And that's all we will be doing in our main activity for this video. So we can continue on with our first fragment and add some code to make it actually function. So here we have to write on you created, which will allow us to actually insert some code and to actually use it such as our button. And all we want to do in here at the moment is create a button. So we'll type in button accept and we will set an on click listener. And the first thing we need to do is get an age from our edit text. So it will take et underscore enter age and take the text and change it to a string. And we will also cast this to an int immediately after. And I'll explain why later. But for now, we will also create a value of name and that's going to equal et underscore enter name dot text to string. And then we are going to write find nav controller dot navigate and it's going to take an ID as an action. And as you can see, the program has automatically generated for us our first fragment, the second fragment action and the second fragment, the first fragment. So we are going to go ahead and click first fragment, the second fragment since we are in our first fragment and that will be that for now. Then we can just go ahead and click on run to see what we have done so far. So as you can see in here, we have the name at the top, which is our fragment first. And if we can enter some random name, uh, we can enter an age and click on accept. And that will take us to our second fragment. But we have not added any information that allows the fragment to understand that it needs to retrieve data. And the first fragment doesn't even know that it should send this data. It is just taking the text from the edit text and changing it to an int and to a string. And also it's very ugly at the top that it says fragment underscore first. It would be a lot better if it said home and if the second fragment said something else. So we will fix all of that immediately, but it's just great to know that our app functions at this point of time, but uh, let's continue immediately. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create a new class. And this is going to be a Kotlin data class. So we're gonna call this uh, user and we want to make this a data class, of course. And inside here, it's gonna store some data. So we're gonna call this val name. That's gonna be of type string and then val age, which will be of type int. And since we want to send this data class from our first fragment to the second fragment, we're going to have to extend parsable. So we're going to type in parsable and we need to also annotate it. So we'll do add parcelize. And that will take care of everything we need to do in our data class. We have set some values that we want it to contain. We have extended parsable 
and we have also added the annotation of parcelize. And as you can see, we have imported these two packages over here and they are absolutely necessary if you want to send data classes across to other fragments. But with that being said, we can go to our tests underscore nav again. So once we have returned to this navigation canvas, we want to click on our second activity. And here you can see it has the option to add arguments. And this is because it is a receiver fragment. So let's go ahead and click on this plus symbol and inside here, you can see it gives us the option to add a name. And here we will add current user and it will say, what type do you want to add? And I'll show you later how you can add these primitive data types, but let's also try to add a custom possible, the one that we just created. And as you can see, it will show the user data class that we've just created. So just click on that and you can click on add and it will add that as a receiver. And in case that didn't work for you, try to go to build and click on rebuild project. With this dependency, it's kind of funky sometimes and it really requires you to click on rebuild multiple times. So just in case that happens, keep that in mind. But let's go back here to arguments and let's also add something called name and give it a type of string. And let's also give this another name of age and give it a type of integer. And actually I prefer to give it a default value. So I'm just going back here to edit this stuff. So update and age integer, I gave it a 99 as a value. And also I mentioned earlier that we want to have nice titles on the action bar. So as you can see here, we have a split mode, we have a code mode, but let's just stay on split mode because I absolutely love having a preview window. And inside here, you will have all the code that has been generated through this canvas. So all you have to note in here for now is that they have IDs and names. And what you want to do is change the label. So for our first fragment, we will just name it home. And for our second fragment label, we will just name it second. And that will take care of the labels at the top of the action bar. But with all of that being done in here, we can now go back to our first fragment and add some more code that will take us to our second fragment with the data that we've specified. So the first thing we want to do inside here is create a user object and we'll type in val user and that's going to equal the user that we had from earlier. And inside here, we will insert the name and the age that we have received from our edit text. And in a real app, it would be really good to make sure that these are not null or this might crash. But in this app, we will pretend that these values will always be taken care of. So we'll forget about that for now. And then we want to go ahead and create an action. And an action is what we are going to use to actually transfer the data over to the second fragment. So right here, we will type in value action, and that's gonna equal first fragment directions dot action first fragment to second fragment. And inside here, we can add a user. And as you can see, it actually doesn't want to take any parameters. And this is because I forgot to rebuild the project. It requires you to do this every now and then, as I mentioned earlier, or else your project will not know about the changes that the navigation components have provided. And let's just wait for that to actually rebuild so we can continue on with this tutorial. Perfect, so as you can see now, we have no more error for our user and it will also give us the option to specify the other parameters we've provided in our test nav, the ones that we have set here, the arguments. So let's go back to our first fragment and we will just specify in a name, which I will name Federico and give it an age of, or give myself an age of 99. And this is just to demonstrate in case you do not want to create a data class, you can just pass normal values through like this. But once we've set all of that up, we can go ahead and use this same statement down here and replace it actually with our action. So now it will actually transfer the data that we have decided to retrieve from our button click and it will send it to our second fragment. So let's go ahead to our second fragment and actually retrieve this data. To do that, we need to create a private value of arguments and it's gonna be by nav args. And inside here, it should auto-generate the second fragment arguments class for you. And with that, we can actually retrieve the data values that we have provided in our first fragment. But inside our second fragment, we should create an on view created, delete the super call, and inside here, we will retrieve the name and set it to the text. So tv underscore name dot text is going to equal arguments. And then we are going to ask for our current user and we will get the name from it. Then we can go tv underscore age dot text. And that's going to correspond to our arguments dot current user dot age to string. So as you saw earlier, I changed it to an int just so we could insert it into the data class. 
and send it here and then translate it to a string. And I believe that is the best way to do it because an age should be seen as an integer in case you want to manipulate that data in a different way later, it will be much easier and it's much easier to cast it to string later, in my opinion. But that's why I did it that way. But as you may have noticed earlier, you can also retrieve other values such as, let's go value name can equal our arguments dot name. And this will correspond to the other two arguments that we have decided to provide in here, such as the name of type string and the age of type integer. So we can also just call on that if you don't want to create the object and it will achieve essentially the same thing. I just like using data classes a bit more because it feels like you can insert a lot more values and you can actually use that data class in a much more efficient way. And that's why I decided to use a data class for this example. But you're more than welcome to just create single values that you can transfer in between the fragments. But with that being said, let's go ahead and run the application. Perfect, so our application is running and we can go ahead and type in our name. So we'll type in Federico and we'll add an age of 77 this time and click on accept. And the data will be transferred over to the second fragment. And as you can see on the top, we have the label that says second and we have a label also that says home when we go to our first fragment. And finally, I'm just gonna give you a few extra tips. As you can see, when we click on accept, we have no animation, just a very quick switch of screens, which is great. I like it that way, it's very efficient, but maybe you want to include an animation and they have actually provided us with default animations. So if we click on this arrow here and click on enter animation, you'll see that they have provided us with some animations. So let's do fragment fade enter and fragment fade exit, just for when we change from our first fragment to the second fragment. When we change back, you'll have to deal with animations by entering some more animations here. And that will take care of that. Also, another thing to mention, as you may have noticed earlier, when we created an action, it will say first fragment to second fragment. But what if we don't want this to be from any specified fragment? We want this just to go to the second fragment from any fragment we click on. Well, then we have to go to our test underscore nav uh, layout. And inside here, you'll see there's an option for global actions. And inside here, you can click on play. What we are gonna do is click on destination and this is going to be our second fragment. And it will auto-generate the ID for us. So it will say action underscore global underscore second fragment. And this means that every time we use this ID, it will just skip to the second fragment. And it does not require it to be attached to any specified fragment, which means if you have a menu options and you want that menu options to be available on many fragments and you all want those fragments to end up on the second fragment, you can specify it as a global action. And that will mean it is accessible from any fragment and it will make life a lot easier. So in our first fragment, as you can see here, instead of specifying these random directions, we can just go in here and type in r.id and type in action global second fragment. So now this will take us to our second fragment. It won't give us any of this information that we've specified, of course, but it will take us to the second fragment and this nav controller can be put in any fragment you desire. But let's get rid of that and let's go ahead and click on play just so I can show you the animation that we have created between the first fragment and the second fragment. So here we go and let's see how it looks when we enter a name. So let's do Federico and give it an age of 66 and click on accept. You can see that very slight fade animation this time. And that's actually all I wanted to show you in this navigation component tutorial. It was quite long, but I really hope it clarified how to use it. And hopefully you can use this in your current project because it's really sweet. And it took, my, it took me a bit of time to get my head around it, but it was definitely worth it. But uh, with that being said, thanks for watching as always. And I will see you guys in the next video.